Hi again, everyone, and welcome to the Aquinas Writing Advantage Open House. I'm Erin Brown, also known by the students as Professor Brown, and it's great to have you here tonight. Let's pray together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God, thank you for just all the families represented across time and space and, and um, just the world, just the ability to come together um, and, and learn, grow, enjoy, uh, just to have this moment. I'm just really thankful for it. I pray that you'll give us clarity, me the ability to communicate well and everyone to ask great questions so that this is a really worthwhile time. I ask all this in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. I am Erin Brown. I am the Senior Director of Homeschool Connections Aquinas Writing Advantage and Aubrey Heckey. You see a picture here, but Aubrey can wave if you see her there. I don't know if I'm spotlighted, if you'll be able to see Aubrey or not. Um, but uh, Aubrey is here. And I've been teaching students for almost 50 years. Yes, that long. <laughs> and, um, oh, if you could spotlight. There we go. Wonderful. Thank you, Ms. Mullen. Um, I've been designing online writing programs for over 25 years for universities, for online schools. And I've written um, 16 books and counting, lots of curricula. And I speak internationally on writing since the 1980s. And so um, I, I bring all of that tonight as the senior director and creator of Aquinas Writing Advantage. Aubrey also has been uh, working with writing and leading as an assistant lead director for another online writing program before coming here with um, being the assistant director, managing director. And she also was the writing assessment coordinator here for Homeschool Connections and a freelance editor for a very long time. So we are so, so thankful that she is here in the program and also tonight. So tonight I'm gonna to share with you what makes a good writing program and some writing tips and details about Aquinas Writing Advantage here at Homeschool Connections and why this is different from other writing programs. That's the first question, how is it different? So tonight you'll get answers to those questions and you'll get more about the specific courses that are here as well and how to use the writing courses here if that's something that you want to do. And most of all, you're gonna find out how online courses use simple technology that you can add to what you're doing right now, whether it's one class, a couple classes, or all of your learning, it can happen here at Homeschool Connections with Aquinas Writing Advantage with the writing courses. Right, what, what you see right now is what a class is like. We use Zoom and students will have in the writing courses a PowerPoint that leads their eyes and their thoughts and their mind. And then the teacher in a video, just like I am right now, will have the chat box just like we have right now. And we have the ability for the students to come on the microphone. They're not required to do so, but we ask questions and interact both with microphones and in the chat box, um, just encouraging students to be engaged in different activities and um, discussions and working together in the classroom. So it is interactive. However, if you have a student who is shy or maybe has a learning difference or a learning challenge, and you don't want that student to interact, that's absolutely fine too. The point is what you see here is exactly what we do in a classroom. So it's a, a really great way to understand how the classes work. By the way, there's also a writing assessment that's available for middle and high school students to find out how your student's doing with writing. We're gonna talk about that later. So you can find out if your skills are where they want you want them to be, okay? We're also gonna learn about certain course designs in general and how designs can be easy to follow or not. And why, when you look at writing curricula, whether it's here or somewhere else, something may be more challenging or easier to do. We'll talk about as a, as a course designer, curriculum designer of many years for writing programs, whether it was when I was in charge of the university, um, very large universities, communications, and writing curriculum for the whole university or whether it's small classes that were for online schools. Uh, it doesn't matter. Whatever we design, there are things that work, things that don't work for writing. So I'm going to share those with you. 
And we're going to learn how ultimately you can prepare your student for writing in the future. Finally, I'm going to, at the very end, have you leave our time together with some writing tips that you can use for any student, any age, to give your student writing skills faster. Now, Aquinas Writing Advantage is part of Homeschool Connections, which is an online Catholic curriculum provider of online courses, with, uh, both live and recorded. And it's especially designed for parents who want their students to learn from college professors and experts in the field. And I see that there is a, uh, there's a typo in my biography, maybe. It said that I taught over 48 years. Um, yes, I am older. <laughs> Thank you for your compliment, but I have been doing this a very long time and um, did start teaching. Actually, I was a little Doogie Howser-ish and started teaching very early at 14 and um, was teaching in my early 20s professionally. So yes, I'm that old. <laughs> um, Homeschool Connections is an online academy. It's been around for 13 years. Walter Crawford and Maureen Whitman are the co-founders. It was established uh, with the idea in mind that, that students teaching their teens could get help with online courses from professionals, those who actually are professionals in the field doing what that certain curricula, the, you know, a, a government worker would teach government and a writer would teach writing and so on, right? I don't know if you've tracked with Homeschool Connections, but they've won many, many um, of the e-learning awards, many, many first place e-learning awards, and they're, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They're, they're decorated, right? As um, understood as very popular and across the world and very, um, not just popular, but what works, right? So those who stay to the end are going to get a special code that you can use for an additional $10 off each and every course, including writing courses. So kind. All right. So I want to start out tonight just talking about writing programs in general. Did you know that most writing programs lack what it takes to create a good writer? Okay, I knew I know this. I actually work not just I designed this program, but I um, work with Aubrey as a managing director. And I've moved on to be a professional writer for companies such as Apple and Pfizer and some of the, all the big names that you are aware of in you know GM and um Lily and J and J and all the other pharmaceutical companies and uh, CBS and you know I, I write for those companies through a large organization worldwide organization and I can tell you now that those that I guide the associate copywriters that I work with every, each and every day who are professional writers um, didn't have the training both in middle and high school and college that allowed them to be the best writers they can be. In fact, I'm doing training each and every day with each of these professional writers who are in their 20s and 30s. And so writing programs out there are lacking and they have been for a very long time. So if your student has struggled with writing, most likely it is not your fault, quote unquote. Okay, I just wanna put that out there. And also even the most highly marketed homeschool writing programs may not be the best programs that are out there. Now I'm speaking as someone who homeschooled for 34 years, 10 of my children were homeschooled. They're all adults now. My youngest at home is 23. And uh, I can tell you on the other side of it that the programs that have been available since I homeschooled were not as a writer, we're not good. <laughs> I just struggled. And that's the impetus. That was the, the drive that I had to create this program because I saw so many students struggling who didn't need to struggle. So what's wrong with most writing programs? Well, many of the teaching methods that are actually in the programs are what we call teacher-centered, not student-centered. That means that curriculum creators, and I know this, I can say this as a curriculum creator for many, many years myself, the curriculum creators are putting the programs together in a way that benefits the teachers teaching in a classroom, okay? It is not individually designed like we like to have for homeschooling. It is specifically, it's, it's ignoring the specific and it's generally produced in a way that isn't helpful to students. 
And for any curriculum, just because it sells doesn't mean it, that it's the best. And just because a student learns to write doesn't mean that he or she finds it easy to write or loves and loves to write. That to me is the most important thing that a student actually gets the skills, but then has a love of writing or an enjoyment of writing. In the end, the great writing programs are about creating a student who loves to write and can write well, both of those things. Now there's a truth about life that 100% applies to writing. And that is in general, people don't like any activity where we don't get it, right? Where we feel like we're missing something. If I were to learn to um, play pickleball, which I do not play at all, I never have never stepped on the court for pickleball. It's very popular where I'm in Michigan um, for persons my age. <laughs> I would feel really not smart. I would struggle. I wouldn't get it at first. And, and just, it's not a good feeling, especially with someone who's competent, right? If you're competent in other areas, when you start out as a beginner, it's hard to do. In other words, we as human beings don't like activities where we feel ignorant, or at least we don't like being in that place where we are learning and are not understanding. And with today's How to Write program, certain teaching methods are actually in the program that increase that dynamic of what my father used to call feeling dumb, or my mother would say, this makes me feel dumb. You know, nothing can make you anything, but that was one of her phrases. Oh, the way they put this together, this recipe, it makes me feel dumb. She would always say things like that. She had all kinds of fun things, fun, fun ways to say things that I remember very strongly as an adult. And that was that the way something is written or this way something is taught, it doesn't help the student feel competent. Most writing programs in, are incomplete. They're missing, they're lacking certain parts of learning and they throw the students into essay writing or long form writing without the foundations that are lacking and the students struggle and learn to dislike writing. They have feelings of inadequacy that are actually increased by the writing program itself. Now, in any educational experience, again, as a person who's guided educators for many, many years, how we teach is important, our methodology and being aware of how students learn and what we teach, the actual content and curriculum, what's inside the program, both of those things are very, very important. So you can have an excellent teacher, a wonderful teacher, but if the curriculum isn't solid, the student won't learn. Likewise, if you have a really great curriculum, but the teacher's not very good, the student will struggle as well, right? You have to have both of those ingredients. I wanna take um, an ingredient that a lot of writing programs use called rote learning. And you've heard of this before, it's where they say copy this or copy work, write ex this exactly as I do, or exactly copy these person's words or way or method. It's like going down the row here in the field and staying in the row, do what I do, do what I say, copy my words. And by copying, you will somehow by magic, by osmosis, by something, the ESP, I don't know, it will, you will internalize the way that this writing is. And that's not how most learning happens. It's just not. Rote learning doesn't teach your student how to think. And as, you, as you'll learn, the Aquinas Writing Advantage program is not rote learning. We do not have copy work at all. Is there a place for copy work? Yes, there can be a place for it. Uh, there are some workbooks that I've created. Let me grab one right here. There's a series, Word Mastery Skill Building. And at the end of every, it's five days of work. And at the end of every day, it has a quote and you will copy the quote. Sometimes we will never know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory by Dr. Seuss. So there's a quote the student will copy. And that's it's not though to learn how to write, it's to learn the truth. So copy work does have a place. Aquinas Writing Advantage uses what we call mastery learning. And that is a special way of teaching that is not rote learning. It is where you think about one small piece of the whole, you break it down, break the whole into a little piece and you examine that piece. You say, how does this piece work? And then we say, let's craft this little piece. We learned how it works, now let's do it on our own. And of course, after the student has created that little piece and said, great, you did it, let's practice it now until we perfect it. So we think and we examine it, we try it out and then we practice and perfect it. Then we move on and we craft the next little piece. We think and examine it, 
we try it out and then we practice and perfect it. And we have this method where we then take these two pieces that we have learned about and tried and practiced with learned about, tried and practiced, and then we chain or connect those together. That's how mastery learning works. We're mastering something, a piece and mastering a piece and adding the pieces. And then we move to the next piece and so on and so on. And what you come up with is this chain of learning that allows the student to master and feel good about learning it because it's just a little piece, right? And that little piece becomes simple. And then they add the next simple piece and simple piece. And soon you're doing this great big task and you don't realize how you got there because the little piece was so simple. I'm gonna give you an example of this. A thesis statement. Most of us in writing know we have to learn about what's called a thesis statement. A thesis statement or a guiding statement is one sentence that gives encapsulates, it gives the meaning of the entire essay to come or the entire paper to come. That's a tall order, right? And most programs say, well, let's write, let's think about what we're gonna write and write this thesis statement. Well, that is not mastery learning because it doesn't show us what are the pieces of a thesis statement. Actually, a thesis statement has a number of pieces, five pieces. It has a claim. It has what's called a time-bound element, when this is happening. It has a geographically bound element where this is happening. It has a, what's called a blueprint. The sections of the essay or the sections of the paper are mentioned in little keyword phrases. And in an advanced college level thesis statement, it has something called a qualification. Now, we, and we teach the qualification actually in middle and high school here. So that when they get to college, it's like super simple because these five little pieces can be broken down uh, into something very, very simple. Students learn the pieces, they practice the pieces and can very easily create a thesis statement. If I were talking about the, the top three or the best, I'm gonna make a claim that the best, um, the best office supplies to have our pens, pencils and staplers. Okay, those are the three sections of my essay that I'm gonna write on, pens, pencils, and staplers. I'm an old school person, can you tell? <laughs> and so that's my blueprint. And I can say my claim is that the top three or the most important elements of an office, of office supplies are, and I would list these three, but I have to put today in there, I have to put a, a, a time bound element. When is, element. when is this happening? Today. I have to put another element in where. I can say across the world, I can say, um, in um, schools, in homes, that's a ge geographical place, right? I can say in the United States or in Europe or in North America, but I create that piece. And then I can say my qualification, which is what's going someone gonna argue? Someone's gonna say, well, no, 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 that, there are better, better things to use <laughs> besides pens, pencils and staplers, right? So my qualification would be, Although there are a number of um, helpful tools in an office, right? Comma, across the nation today, across the United States today, pens, pencils, and staplers uh, are the most useful tools for students. See, I used all my elements. And so by thinking of a thesis statement in its little parts, we can help the students master each part, list each part, put together each part and create a thesis statement over and over and over and over. And that's the approach called mastery learning that we use here at Aquinas Writing Advantage. Do you see how different it is? It is different. All right, another talk here, Let, let's, let's focus on what's wrong with writing programs as a writing curriculum developer of many, many years. I could say this, I, I can criticize curriculum developers because I am one, right? Most writing programs are too wordy. How many of you have looked at a writing program and you're like, oh my goodness, there's so many words in these instructions or wow, that, that paragraph, I would never write a paragraph like that. That's way too wordy, right? The best writing is concise, clear, and powerful through excellent wielding of words and not drowning in words and information. The problem is most writing curriculum creators are not professional writers. They are people who just, teachers who love words. And when you love words, 
watch out, danger. You can have too many words in your curriculum, right? So you'll find that much of what's out there in writing curriculum is just too wordy. And then it's too long and too boring. And maybe they stay on one element over and over and over. I'm thinking of um, grammar. There's a grammar book that's big and red and I don't, I'm not gonna name names, but I used this book many, many years. And my kids, every single one of them that used the book said, this is so long and so boring. And just the same thing over and over, hopefully thinking that that repetition is going to help them become a better writer and it did not influence them positively. So pacing does matter when the content repeats too much with exercise after exercise, or it goes too fast and it doesn't solidify the ideas first before you move on, then students can lose the interest either way. The third thing then of what's wrong with writing programs today is they are what I call antiquated. They're stuck in older methods or styles of teaching and learning that have been proven ineffective by research and aren't the best practices. I'm not just talking about newfangled ideas. I'm talking about actual research because we have great learning today presented for all learners because we know more about how people learn. We know more about learning styles and multiple modes or ways of taking in the information that God created each of our children different and wonderfully made and they in, take in information differently. Now MRIs have been giving us this knowledge for a number of years now. We know about neurology and the best ways to remember and to learn because we can actually image the brain in learning now and see what's working and what isn't. So if you have a program that is older and it's not based in current research of what we have learned is really the best way to teach and to learn and to grow and to become, that can hold us back. Now, this number four is perhaps my biggest um, struggle with writing programs. The creator of the program is not an expert source. Some top selling programs and the materials are designed and taught by self-proclaimed experts. And you and I know that today, anybody can jump on social media or on the web and proclaim themselves, anybody could write a book and put it on Amazon, right? And proclaim themselves as an expert. Um, but sometimes primary school teachers or history teachers or middle school writing teachers are creating uh, upper level writing curriculum that really isn't their specialty. These experts are not writers themselves. Most aren't privy to college writing needs or future work writing needs. Most don't publish or edit their books except for their own self-published curriculum. They, have, they don't have an editor. They haven't been writing as an editor or writer. By the way, most authors' work is corrected by the real writing experts, the editors, right? Um, remember this when we talk about the teachers here at Aquinas Writing Advantage, because um, just it really is important for a person teaching to have the skills in a professional capacity in teaching a skill when you get to upper levels. The authors or promoters of a program might have learned a method by taking a workshop and then considered themselves an expert writer, or an expert teacher, writing teacher, and then created a program. And again, because a company might market well, we buy their programs. And because parents don't know what they're missing, they're, it looks great on the surface. And people say, oh my gosh, that's the best one to use. That's the best program to use, right? Um, and so uh, I'm just putting that warning out there that most, if many, if not most writing programs are not created by what we call an expert or someone who is really knowledgeable in writing. I see that someone had a question about the program. Is it from a Catholic perspective? Absolutely, yes. Everything here at Homeschool Connections and Aquinas Writing Advantage is from the Catholic perspective all the way through. So the goal of any writing program is to create great writers, right? And which happens to be when the program and the instructors are current and the content is created and taught by experts, actual writers and seasoned teachers, that's when we create great writers. Now the best course material is simple, simplified, like I was talking about before, it's mastery learning. It's easy, logical, it is modular. We're gonna talk about that shortly, meaning that the courses are single in nature and they cover one topic and master that topic and then move on to using the information. Information then is put into what we call a linear step-by-step -step 
presentation with practice so that students can not just learn things in order, but have enough time to practice their writing. The instruction is best when there is a beginning to end overarching design and each course is filled with small pieces of learning that are progressive, one leading to the next and it all fits together. Now, one of the biggest questions I always get at open houses or just from parents in general is what if I've done other writing programs before? Is my student in trouble? No, absolutely not. You can come in here at any level and succeed. We have things in place to help you do that. It is really great if you start your student in middle school, fifth or sixth grade, and then continue all the way through the program. We do have um, students who have done that all the way through and gone on to go to college and then they're actually out married and in positions and jobs. We have published authors who have come from this program. Um, so we have a nice, a nice view, a long-term view of what happens when someone does take the program from beginning to end, and it's very positive. Now, the truth about writing, most people don't know this, the truth about writing is at least 50% of writing is thinking. At least 50% of writing is thinking. I like to say it is 75 to 80% of writing is thinking and being able to think in a way that you can then write. And I'm saying this again as a professional writer of almost 50 years. Now to teach the thinking of writing, we have to have something in a writing program called ideation. And that's brainstorming. We know that word, but it's being able to ask questions. It's being able to, of yourself, know what questions to ask and to be able to say, well, if that's true, then what? And if that's true, what's next? And so on. Because writing almost always, if not always, is linear. It is an idea after an idea after an idea. And if you can think smoothly, you can write smoothly. It is critical thinking and it's learning how to think. This linear thinking uses structure. There are many structures, uh, but we always have a beginning, middle and the end. We always use supporting ideas, examples and explanations. We always think clearly in next step pieces without missing any steps. That's a, what a great writing program does. Now, to start with that kind of writing, we have to start with the power of words. We, this is um, choosing strong words or knowing what words do for you and being able to choose powerful words. What is a strong noun? What is a powerful active verb? How do I ramp up my noun? How do I put the adjectives and adverbs and prepositional phrases in? And it's not just learning these things in middle school, but then it's also, it's writing. It's all about using. So once we teach an idea, immediately the students are writing with that idea. There aren't worksheets to fill in. There aren't little pieces. It's about actually creating, thinking, creating, and writing, okay? And it all begins with words, what words to use and what words not to use. Um, by, by the way, again, with the professional writers I work with every day, I'm teaching these professional writers about, oh, those kinds of pronouns we don't use and here's why. And they're like, oh my gosh, why did no one ever, ever tell me this, right? So there are specific words that we avoid in great writing. And we learn those right away in middle school and in early high school. Now, any excellent writing program also shows structure of how to organize your ideas and frame your words. And again, that's just not just choosing words, but putting them into really cool, excellent sentences, powerful sentences, and then how to line up sentences in paragraphs. And to show the students there are many ways to write. We talk about tones and the choices of words. And it's not just one five paragraph essay. There are many ways that we write. We then show how to expand ideas, how to grow your ideas and how to frame those ideas. And again, there are more structures than the five paragraph essay. This is what any excellent writing program does, okay? So if you are gonna take this information and use it, think about, you know, take notes, write down, these are the things I'm going to look for in a writing program. Your student learns with a direct how-to teacher. That's, I believe, the best way to teach. I'm talking to somebody who's been teaching for over 50 years for a complete understanding with just enough practice to become a solid, confident writer and then move on. 
to the next item of learning. And then finally, if you are looking at what do I need to have for a great writing program, you want to have four things. The program will cover what's called foundations, things like punctuation and grammar, things like parts of speech, right? The basics, but it doesn't just stop, stop there. We have then very quickly moving into what we call writing development, where you learn how to develop your ideas and create on the page. And then advanced methods are the methods that you'll use in um, college writing and beyond and maybe professional writing. And then finally, creative writing does something that uh, any of the other academic writing pieces do not do. It activates a part of our brains that is unique and wonderful and actually increases learning for STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And most people say, well, my student's going into engineering. He doesn't need or she doesn't need creative writing. In reality, the kind of writing that happens, the thinking that goes into creative writing is exactly what's needed for STEM. So something to think about. It's what you need to succeed in the future period. So when you look for, for a writing program, look for wide ranges of courses from punctuation and grammar to advanced writing. Include fiction writing and writing for literary analysis, poetry, screenwriting, all the kinds of really fun writing pieces that get your student excited about writing. And prepare your student for graded work. Uh, filling out workbooks through middle and high school is not going to allow them to get their work graded in college with success, okay? So we need to give them the experience of grades at earlier ages so they're not freaked out when they're graded at a college level. So from simple practice for writing dynamic paragraphs and college prep, it's really important to have all of these pieces. And of course, you see this coming, Aquinas Writing Advantage meets all of the criteria that we've talked about tonight. Again, the impetus for me creating the program was my own, or my own students, my own kids, my 10 students that I homeschooled at home. And then as a professional teacher, quote unquote, and a professional writer of many years, it was being able to impart ideas to families in a way that will build up great writers who love to write. Now, I'm not just a professional writer and designer of online programs but and college programs, but I actually, in designing this program, thought about as a college curriculum designer and college teacher of many years, of writing and communications, what do students need to have up here? And then back designed down to middle school as to linearly very easily move step-by-step step into what is needed for college. Now, again, it's really, really fun to have students who've graduated college and gone into school. And I get funny emails that say things like, oh my goodness, Professor Brown's courses were so much harder then my writing courses, they're so easy now, you know, <laughs> said in a fun way, not that it was hard, but to say that college became easy or um, the students who have published or won scholarships or, you know, just basically using the basic learning here, nothing special, but it, it just gives the students a leg up. It's really, really fun to get that feedback. Now, this is on the website. I just wanted to very briefly show you if you want to go to homeschoolconnections.com or AquinasWritingAdvantage.com, there are two websites. Homeschool Connections is the general parent company website with all subject areas. They have over 650 courses online of anything you'd want, it's there, almost anything. And then the writing program, Aquinas Writing Advantage is just the writing program on a website. But you'll see this, that it's all about mastery. We talked about that tonight. It's all about critical thinking. We also talked about that. And it's about short courses that build on one another. So mastering a little bit and then moving on to the next thing. And it is tested and true after a number of years now, not just learning, winning first place with online programs, but also real life students and families who are able to say this really worked. It is also all laid out for you so you do not have to worry about your writing curriculum. It is 100% there for you. Most importantly, it was designed with the end in mind. It is research-based. It is where your teens learn side-by-side -side with experts, current, correct, 
and practical. And I wanna show you now how it's all put together. Um, somebody asked if we, how many courses we have. Is it 19? I thought it was more, because if we count the word course, the, the we have um, spelling courses, we have, oh, teachers. It was the teachers, says, yes. Oh, gotcha. We have 19 teachers as of right now. We're hiring two to three more teachers for the fall. Okay. Um, but yeah, courses, we have quite a few courses you'll see in a moment. We also have a question, how is the live class graded differently than paying for the added grading for the pre-recorded cost as a factor? We'll talk about that shortly. So it's a great question, Christina. So we'll talk about that in just a minute. All right. So remember I said, best programs have foundations and development and advanced and creative. Well, the foundations here are found in middle school and high school. So you will have foundations and excellence courses, academic excellence, whether it's creative writing, a full fiction writing program with expressive writing or business writing, or whether it's just college prep, um, kind of an AP advanced placement type courses, it's all here. There are three ways to get these courses. It is flexible. The first is that you take the recorded courses completely online with something called unlimited access. And that's at your own schedule, at your own pace. Um, it is, get this, $34.97, right? $34.97, do I have it right? I think I have it right. $34.97 for all 600 plus courses access. That's incredible. Just as a parent who homeschooled a lot of kids. That's great, great savings, okay? So that's access to all the courses, all the weeks, all the materials, all the recordings of the teachers teaching each and every class. And that can be at your own pace. They also have what's called single access where you can take one class a month at, I think it's $17.97. It's under $18 for one class. So again, it's, it's quite affordable. You can also take unlimited access classes and recording with grading help. And that was mentioned here. This is specialized one-on-one -on -one instructor access grading services where a teacher works side by side with your student across email. And that is, can be started at any time. You can start tomorrow. If you wanted to, you sign up in the learning management system. I'll talk about that in a moment. And when you click in, the teacher reaches out to you and you set up exactly what works for your family in say it's a 10 week course or a 12 week course we add two to three weeks on as the limit to get the course complete within that time so if you have a really gung-ho student who wants to accomplish a lot this summer and that would be great to do instructor access because they could do two classes a week if you have a student with a learning challenge or a learning difference you can also take a course and stretch it out so, uh, and get that one-on-one -on -one help that you need. So grading help is really, really um, nice to have. It is an extra cost because you are hiring a teacher to work with you. And that cost varies depending on the class that you're taking and the, the number of assignments, how difficult the assignments are and so on. The third option is for live courses, semester long live courses in a weekly classroom. These start, we have a fall semester a spring semester and a summer semester. Uh, the summer semester is light. Most of our courses are in the fall and the spring. Fall goes from the last week in August or the first week in September through to the second week in December. And then spring semester starts the second or third week, depending on the course you're taking, of January and goes through April or May, again, depending on the length of the course. And then summer can start in May or June or July or August, depending on what the course is, okay? And each way of learning can be designed to exactly fit your family's needs. And you can mix and match any of these ways of learning as well. Now, in semester and your segments, they're, they're laid out, as we said before, in pieces. This shows a fall and spring semester for high school. So you'll see 9-1 and 9-2 are typically in the fall, 9-3 and 9-4 are typically in the spring. So 9-1 and 9-2 are usually um, six and eight weeks. And then spring semester 9-3 and 4 are eight and eight weeks. So you have full semesters of learning. 10-1 and 10-2, 10 weeks and 10 weeks, fall and spring. 
11, 1, 2, 3, 12 weeks in the fall, 11, 4, 5, 7, 12 weeks in the spring, 12, 1, 10 weeks in the fall, 12, 2, 10 weeks in the spring. See, it's set out in a what we call a normal schedule. Now, by these are suggested grade levels, indicating the numbers for the title. The courses are linear, they are in order, but if you have an advanced student who is um, tests out of the nine series, they can start at their uh, ninth grade age, can start in a 10th grade, or they can take 10th and 11th at the same time, or 11th and 12th at the same time. We do ask that the students take the courses in order. They are organized in order to teach the content, foundations, development, creative, and advanced writing to hit everything that a great writing program has. So those foundation courses, again, are either in middle school or high school, the six, seven course courses in middle school, the nine series courses in high school. These courses as foundations get rid of the typical mistakes that most writers make, including the challenges with commas, sentence constructions, paragraph, great paragraphs, and so on. And they cover essential writing and what I call simplified writing, those absolute must have low, how to key, how to write low key, high key, the, the most important pieces of writing that make your students' writing easier. This is what is covered in the six, seven course courses. Punctuation and grammar one and two are spread out two semesters and sentence and paragraph writing one and two are spread out so that each semester your student has not just punctuation and grammar, but they're actually writing and using what they learned. And the second semester reinforces what was learned, but then introduces more information, deeper information. The expectations of the students are raised and the quality of their writing and the compound sentences. And, you know, the difficulty is increased in the second semester as well. In the seventh and eighth grade year, we get into actual long form writing, compositions, essays, papers, how to write an essay and form and style. Well, you'll see that in the seven, eight course three and four, we're now getting into typically what's taught in ninth grade. So it is a little bit ahead. This program is a little bit more advanced than the typical um, courses, whether it's online or in the classroom. And again, it's laid out in two in the fall, two in the spring, two in the fall, two in the spring. But if you do unlimited access, you can start a course at any time. Now the high school beginning or foundational writing also starts with punctuation and grammar for six weeks and then moves on to the strong foundational writing skills the must have that you must know to write any long form piece of writing. Then it moves into excellent paragraphs and essays. And we talk about things like um, how to summarize and paraphrase and how to connect and transition more um, in an advanced way and how to use things like bookending and um, specific hooks that work wonders. And, and we get into more details. And then beyond the five paragraph essay is actually advanced writing skills that aren't typically taught till 10th or 11th grade but we bring those down into the foundational writing skills. And you'll see again how it's laid out here in the fall and spring semesters. The 10 series courses are development courses. Remember we have our foundations and then our development. The 10 series is vocabulary and writing. So it's really split into learning vocabulary and then writing with that vocabulary with a really strong emphasis on critical thinking. Because remember that's a huge part of writing. So we learn vocabulary words, um, almost 750 of them throughout the year. We make academic essay and paper writing easy through these smaller practice sessions that use critical thinking. And we perfect the academic writing style before we get into advanced pre-college type writing. Again, over 750 words. And the things that you need to know to be a successful advanced writer. The creative writing series this is again development. This is where students get to enjoy thinking in a different way to create. We have, if you don't want to do creative writing, we also have business writing tracks, a, a business writing track that is um, journalism and business writing, but uh, it's not as creative, but it still keeps them writing into something that they absolutely need for the future to be successful. So you'll see these fit in the middle years of high school. And I want to point out that the fiction program here is the largest, as far as we know, the largest 
faith-based fiction writing, Catholic writing program in the world. And uh, I'm, I take great pride and a thrill in that my MFA is in creative writing genre fiction and I have coached writers, uh, authors, and I speak to authors monthly across the nation and world. Um, I spoke last month with the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America Nebula Awards, the top awards for um, science fiction and fantasy, television and books and so on. Uh, it's just a, a wonderful thing to be able to develop something here that leads people into professional writing or just creative writing and getting that part of the critical thinking going. And again, we have that business writing track as well. All right. Now the 12 series is the pre-college courses. We write with an all nine forms of rhetoric needed for college level writing. So every week they're writing a different type of essay, a definition essay, a comparison and contrast essay, a classification division essay, and so on. And then you learn to write with the top two forms of college comparison and contrast and persuasion. The first semester is a very large paper that is comparison and contrast paper. And the second semester is all about research and persuasion and argument. And this course is AP level information. It is not an AP class, but it is AP level information. I know I was the director of an AP Academy online and Aubrey was the assistant director with me there. So we're very familiar with AP English language and composition. And again, we do rhetoric figures of speech essays and papers or research writing college prep. And it is in the last year of high school. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't mention our really, really awesome advanced courses like punctuation and grammar two, which gets into the trickiest parts of punctuation and grammar. I've had adults take these courses <laughs> because they, they're like, I'm going to master this. And um, the parents who English is their second language have taken these courses as well. We have a write your own science fiction and fantasy short story course, eight weeks that was created by myself and the former science fiction and fantasy writers of America president. And um, I've had adults also take that course as they love it. We have essay test mastery for college bound students. The OLL-1 is the course number, uh, which is a fabulous course teaching students how to write essays for college. And then we have things like comedy writing, comedy and humor in literature and life, parts one and two by a really amazing uh, teacher who is also has been a performer across the United States for many decades. And again, this is just some of the things that we have in advanced fiction that you'll find nowhere else with screenwriting and poetry and all kinds of uh, just really amazing advanced creative writing courses. Now we do have summer and fall courses. We have leadership and interpersonal communication, a four week, uh, no, that was an eight week, eight weeker. We have spelling boot camp for middle school and high school students, which helps in their writing. And we have introduction to literature and writing, how to read, interpret and write about literature parts one and two through the year for middle school. If you want your student to get a jump on literature and writing. And we have middle school creative writing recorded and spelling boot camps again in the summer. Now, some courses do have prerequisites and taking their prerequisites is important. So you don't wanna skip anything. And that's because we teach things here differently than in other programs. I use a lot of shorthand that was developed over many years of teaching college students and uh, tips and tricks are put into words that you just won't find at other places that help students remember things quickly. And so there are ways, if your student is an older student, there are ways to help them get up to speed as it were. So let's talk about, and we'll talk about those ways shortly, but are there any questions at this point before we go into how the course actually works? Any other questions? No? Would a six, seven class be appropriate for a rising fifth grader who excels? Absolutely, yes. Is there anything she need to know before entering? Aubrey, do you want to answer this? Because your daughter was in the six, seven classes this year, and she's an advanced fourth grader, right? Um, sure, I can speak to this a little bit. She's she's a fourth grader, and I think that for her, the class was just 
a little bit out of her reach. Um, there were some exercises at the beginning, the six, seven, one class that she could do well, but I think that next year when she is in fifth grade, that would be a better fit for her. So I absolutely think that an advanced fifth grader could do well in the six, seven class. We actually had a fourth, your daughter and two fifth graders in this last semester. They were all considered advanced. And some of the things that the parents just were really on top of things with the student and were able to explain, sit down in, in the class with the student and so on, right? But if, if you have an advanced student, yes, absolutely, yes. A question, um, you're very welcome. Let me move this here, there's another question. What happens if a kiddo starts a course and finds out it's not a good fit or tries to stick it out and fails? Can they retake? Absolutely, yes. And we also have something I'm gonna talk about shortly. We have writing support specialists who if a student gets going in a course and struggles, they can either bring the specialist in in private lessons during the course, which students have done, which they'll have a one or two private lessons on a specific concept, or the student will step out of the class and go over to one-on-ones with the specialist for the rest of the course. So, and we've had students go through a course and say, you know what, I didn't learn it enough, and then go over to the specialist to just do what's needed, maybe in the last classes to revisit some of the ideas. Yeah. Greg says, what about a student who has never had a formal writing class, rising 10th grader? How do I know where to start or place her? We have a number of ways to know, and I'm going to talk about those shortly. So hold on. <laughs> All right. There are questions in the QA. Um, Jennifer, could you read some of those questions for me? Because I don't have a Q&A pod open. Yes. Um, my son experienced a different writing program last school year and, and had a hard time following the checkoff list. How is this program similar or different to this approach? Doing different paragraphs at different times to put them all together at the end, is that how it works? Or can you explain more? Okay. So, so the way that, what grade level? is the student, if that was your question, go ahead and put in the chat box, the grade level of the student, because it's different for different grade levels. In this program, it's again, very linear and very specific to learning skills in a way that the students masters that skill and is feeling positive about that skill and then not moving on until that's mastered. Okay, so I don't this know about the approach. Seventh, seventh grade, I apologize. Seventh grade, seventh grade. all right, yes. awesome. So the problem with most seventh grade programs is they jump ahead to essay writing without the foundations and learning how to master the, the words and the sentences and the paragraphs. So that's why we have six, seven, seven, eight. Notice the numbers. We have actually fifth, sixth, and seventh and eighth graders in the six, seven. And in the seven, eight, we have six, seven, and eight, and sometimes ninth graders in the seven, eight, right? Because different students learn at different rates. And in the six, seven courses, we actually go back and talk about, all right, what are the words to avoid? Pronoun, what are pronouns? How do we get pronouns out? What about pointing words? This, these, those, and that, very weak words. There, T-H-E-I-R, or they. And certain words that we target and we teach the student how to remove those words from their writing. And then we talk about, let's look at the nouns. What is a strong noun? What is a weak noun? How do I change that? Here, you know, the, the rabbit ran. What kind of, is it a jackrabbit? Is it a pet rabbit? What color is the rabbit, right? And ran, ran, that's kind of a weak verb. I mean, did it dash? Did it sprint? Did it, you know, what happened? So we teach the student to look at their words and assess to figure out what's going on with my words and how can I make them stronger? And then what can I add? Can I add like a time and a place or into the woods or a dashed across the, the mowed lawn, not just a lawn, but a mowed lawn or a, you know, um, the wet lawn, right? So we teach the students to think more deeply and to create, to actually write. Then we put sentences together, then we put paragraphs together and so on. Um, thank you that you, you mentioned, we're gonna talk about writing assessments, but you've mentioned there in the chat box, we do have a writing assessment service that we're gonna talk about shortly. Um, so thank you, Aubrey. And if, if a student uh, is rising and you need to know how to fit that student in, again, it's um, whether it's in a seventh, eighth, or a tenth, we have different ways. All right, another question, real quick. 
Uh, yes. Is it possible for my high school student to take a fiction writing course coming from another program or any other prerequisite courses? Are they are there any required? We do ask that the student has at least in recording gone through and watched the nine series basic courses, the first two, nine one and nine two. And that's because we expect the students to have a certain level of punctuation and grammar, even in fiction writing and in structure, which is covered in the nine two course. Okay. So this summer, the student could watch the courses, you know, you get single access or just the, the regular unlimited access and watch the classes. Uh, you can play with some of the assignments. If you want to, this, the nine one courses are self-graded quizzes. You could take the quiz just to see how they did with retention, right? And um, then they'll be ready to take the fiction writing courses in the fall. Yeah, good question. All right. Here's, I have one more mm -hmm. here for you. Okay. There is a train of thought that one can develop writing skills through the reading of good literature, great books by various authors and writing back narrations of what was read. Then one will soon naturally become in, ingrained with the different writing styles of these authors and begin to apply these techniques and styles in their own writing. What are your thoughts about this method? That is a great question. I think it's this is my personal experience. I'm going to say what I believe strongly as a writing curriculum developer of almost 50 years and as a professional writer myself, and as someone who trains teacher, writer teachers for almost 30 years and who trains professional writers daily and speaks to authors across the world. So I'm coming from a place of been there, done that. Okay. And so there is value. I'm going to start with there is value with reading and understanding language and how it's put together. And you can bet that I am reading my favorite authors over and over and over so I can hear how language flows and how, how the structure is put together and so on. That's a really, really important part of language development. However, to write, as I said before, is to think. And the thinking of writing, the ideation of writing, the ability to create, know how to create, how to think is super important. You can't do that just reading other work and back working. That it's a whole different skill, okay? Ideation and being able to think critically is a whole different skill to learn. Also, in creative or in, in any writing, there are ticks, ticks, tips tricks, requisites, things that you have to know that those who are very skilled writers can impart to you. It's like a surgeon can maybe watch a lot of surgeries, but when a, a surgeon tells another surgeon, try this technique this way and teaches a specific technique, you can bet I want that surgeon, right? It's the same thing with writing. There are specific techniques and ways and know-how pieces that come from professional writers or writers who know. And so can a, can a person learn to write in that way? I think it's rare. I, I, I believe that a person is going to come out of that type of learning with deficits. From what I've seen as a college professor at three different colleges, I was in charge of writing curriculum, the writing curriculum within an entire university and all the communications curriculum, digital and, and verbal and so on. And I can tell you that, and, and I'm in charge of professional writers today, I can tell you they're lacking. Okay, they're just programs out there are not meeting the needs of writers. It's, it's just not happening. And so, yes, that can be a piece. From my experience, it is not enough. Okay, and that is 100% my thought. Okay, and that's, but you, you see where I'm coming from. Also a homeschooling parent of 34 years. So um, I see another question just came in. Uh, do students submit assignments to you? Let's talk about it. Let's go on. Let's talk about how it works. All right. So we have live schedule courses in all subjects. Within Homeschool Connections, there are 250, over 250 live courses for the coming year and about 40 instructors, instructors that do those live courses. I'm trying to go fast. I'm looking at the time. Unlimited access, are the, those are recorded courses, all subjects. There are over 600 courses, about 65 instructors, and all the writing courses, every single one is in recording 
all the writing courses are me teaching. Okay, whereas we have other teachers teaching live courses who are very skilled. We're gonna talk about them in a minute. I'm the instructor for all the recordings, okay? Now, live courses are scheduled on dates and times. There's a catalog, which is available. In fact, because you came here tonight, we're gonna to send you the catalog that we have just for, it, it, it's a list of courses. I wouldn't call it a catalog, but it's like a catalog just for the writing program. Um, you sign up for a class in a registration system online. The class begins on a specific date and it ends on a specific date. It's once a week and students enter the classroom just like you entered today. The teacher teaches just like I'm speaking to you today and the students interact together in the chat box and to the teacher. And yes, homework is due every week. Okay, every single week there will be classwork, homework to do, readings, um, watching a video, a, an extra video for five or 10 minutes and making, you know, taking a quiz and create it, creating writing, doing the writing during the week. All right. And I have a great question from Ruth. I'm going to answer that in just a minute. Hold on. For the unlimited access, you can pay again $34.97 a month for all 600 plus courses or 360 for a full year. You save a little bit of money by doing that, by paying yearly. And that's all done and you have access to any and all courses, including all the writing courses. And in the recorded courses, these are embedded in what's called a learning management system called Moodle. It is a system where everything you need for a course, once you click into the course, is on one page. And in blocks, you'll see class one and all the class one materials in order, and then class two and all the class two materials in order, and class three and all the class materials in order, and so on. So students will start with a recording, watching a recording, and then they'll go down and complete the work in order. Okay, at the very top of every writing course is a list of all the assignments for that course. So parents can print that off, put it on the refrigerator, or students can put it in the notebook and click off all the assignments as they go down the list. Courses that are recorded can be viewed on a laptop, desktop, computer, iPad, tablet, or phone. I don't recommend the phone because it's a bit deep and you can't do the chat box very well, but you can in a pinch watch on the phone. Now for instructor access, again, a grading service for recorded courses, you can get an instructor to grade your student's work and give personal feedback. The student can ask questions at any time during the week. The student can send a half completed assignment and say, am I on the right track? There's a the back and forth that happens and the price varies based on the difficulty of the grading of the course. I wanna mention that Franciscan University looked over this program and said they'd like all their incoming freshmen to take the courses here. <laughs> that was their comment, especially the 12th grade courses before attending Franciscan. So that's kind of fun to have that. Now we're going to talk about the step, but I want to answer this question from Ruth. My son wants to become a writer. Do you have any suggestions for him to do now? He has written many credit comics and stories. He wants to see them published. I highly recommend getting involved in the classes for fiction writing here. Again, this is the much of what is here is MFA level, Master of Fine Arts level material. I developed the program, I have the MFA, I speak to professional writers monthly. I can tell you what's here is going to give him what he needs and at least get him on his pathway for professional writing. So um, you can email me, I'm gonna give my email address at the end too and we can discuss you know, a way for him to do that either through recording and one-on-one -on -one work with a, an editor, helper, teacher or in the live class. Now we have the most amazing instructors in the world. I must say, I only bring teachers, instructors on who are highly skilled or published in their field and or published in their field. Um, what class is required? Go ahead and email me and I'll let you know, okay. All right, so some of the people here, um, like Sharon, the person at the top row with the glasses who teaches our advanced class, she actually teaches nine, 10, and 12 series, the advanced classes. She was a lawyer and teaches the argumentative writing course as a lawyer and has been a, a teacher. She's certified to teach English, has been a high school teacher and a specialist um, for all kinds of students. And um, let me give you another example. Bottom right, the, the poetry writing teacher is a, a la highly lauded and awarded poet a Catholic poet who has a number of books out and has been, um, you know, lauded as a great writer. Uh, 
on the left, you'll see me with a hat on the left and below me is actually a former student who is a published author now. She took classes way at the beginning of the program. She went through, she went to college, became a writer and published a book. And she actually is one of our fiction writing instructors, uh, great for the instructor access grading services. Um, on the bottom left, Maureen with the beautiful long hair was an editor for Scholastic. Um, we have on the top left, the former science fiction and fantasy writers of America president. To the right of him with the beard, Mr. Sterrett is, uh, is, he has six or seven books published, Aubrey, I can't remember. He just published another book um, and he's one of our middle school teachers. Uh, to the right of him, Ms. Shiraz, she's a writing support specialist as well. She has, is an, a motivational speaker and a, a very skilled uh, decorated teacher. Um, down below on the left in the red shirt, a professional edit, book editor, fiction writing, is one of the fiction writing teachers. And um, she does instructor access as well as the live classes. Next to her is Mr. Mike Stumbos. He is also a multi-published book author and speaker on fiction writing and teaches fiction writing courses here and on and on and on. This is not all of our teachers, but they are just, I, I, I will only bring people in who really know what they're doing. That's I, very high standards. <laughs> I want these people to love what they do and to be able to impart that love of writing to your students and be highly, highly skilled with working with students. Um, Ms. Weiss, again, has her JD degree. She's a former attorney and she is a master teacher of many years. Bonnie Donlin is a teacher of the middle school writing courses, has been teaching many years. And these are our assistant directors for the high school and the middle school. We have an assessment that you can take in middle and or high school to find out where your students' strengths lie or where the weaknesses are. Along with the assessment, if you're interested in taking courses here, we'll say you can take this course this week, you'll find the skill that your student needs to work on. So an assessment would be a really great way to figure out um, if your student's older, how they would fit into a course. And they're very, very reasonable prices. We have a question over here to make sure I understand if we choose a live course, homework is submitted and graded by the teacher, yes. And recorded classes, the homework is completed, but are graded by a parent, yes, unless you have the instructor access um, that you purchase in addition to access to the course. So one of the prices, the, the 34.97 for over 600 courses is your access to the course with all the materials. If you feel competent and want to grade the work, we welcome you to do that because you as a parent are in charge of your homeschool. Um, but we do have writing instructors who are professionals available for you at the cost that is appropriate for the assignments in that course and their time to work one-on-one -on -one as a tutor with your student. Does that make sense? Yes, okay. All right, we have writing assessments again, Ms. Bonnie Donlin and Mr. Nick Wilson who are the writing assessment coordinators for middle school and high school and give uh, really amazing feedback and very detailed um, assessment results to you. We have writing support specialists. We're actually bringing on a second writing support specialist for high school. It's not listed here yet. Ms. Nally Shira is the specialist for middle school and Ms. Maureen Ryan is for the high school. They, give one-on-one -on -one Zoom sessions, 30 minutes each, half hour private lessons, you pay per session, or they both offer a block of lessons at a discounted price. You, they'll work in conjunction with the course here, or they'll work on a specific skill that the course the students struggling with in a course. You can have one lesson, two lessons, or many lessons. So that's uh, usually a person doing a writing support specialist, one-on-one um, -on -one is someone who needs specific help with a specific type of learning in a course or a student who just needs that little bit of extra one-on-one -on -one work. Okay, a lot of information. I wanna leave you with, with what I call the most important truths about writing and then we're gonna open it up for the last 10 minutes of questions, okay? So the first thing that I tell students from sixth grade on is writing is rewriting. And so I encourage all parents to write that down and stick it on the wall, on the bulletin board, 
on the computer, some somewhere where the student can see it, writing is rewriting. So the idea that we just think and write and it's done really isn't how writing works. And we want to start early, helping our student understand when we put an idea down, that isn't our final idea. That's our first idea. And the actual task of a writer is to play with ideas. I like to call it the sandbox of ideas. And so when you write something down, then you have to examine it and figure it out. What do I like? What do I not like? What's strong? What's weak? How can I change it? Writing is rewriting. Another truth is that good writing is taught with the end in mind. So if your student is struggling with something, you want to backwork what is needed to be a good writer in that specific task academically. And for the best communication, it could be a task that's just you know face-to-face -face communication. It's just communication. But whatever is missing, think about the element, break it into its parts and backwork it and then start doing the pieces and parts. That's how writing works. Good writing programs cover those three areas or four areas, I, should, I said three, it should be four, foundations, development, creative, and advanced. So if you are, you know, if you leave here and say, oh, this isn't for me, that's okay. Just make sure, please look for these elements so that your student feels really competent and learns to write in a way that is complete. And, and they just, through that competence, learn to love to communicate. Good writing programs break the skills down into specific pieces of information to teach in segments. So if you have a program that just jumps right into large form writing like essays, look again. <laughs> or if you're doing like, this is a noun, and then let's write an essay. There are pieces in the middle that are missing. That's where students get caught up and get bad habits. And it, it, that, that's that big jump. We need to think in small pieces. The measure of anyone's writing is in the practical outcome. And so what I'd like to do is have parents maybe screen capture this or, or write this down. You know, when you get the recording, go here and freeze the recording and write it down and put it up on the wall again. Before you turn something in, is it clear? Is it concise? Did I say it with as few great words as possible? Does it make sense? When I read it out loud to you, does it make sense? Is it ordered and linear or am I missing something, right? Does it grab and keep my attention? Because if it's not, I want to rewrite something. And does it give me in the end, so what? Everything that we write ends or should end with why this is important. So what? Why did I do this? Why did I learn that? What do I want to walk away with? These are the elements about great writing that, that we we have these on the wall, we ask these questions, it will help our student to create writing that makes sense and is complete. Remember, not all writing programs are equal and not all writing teachers are equal. Good writing teachers are good writers themselves. I wholly believe that. Now to find details on every course, you can also go to AquinasWritingAdvantage.com and there it will say classes one, two, three, four, you know, all the classes listed and what's exactly covered in each class, as well as a narrative paragraph on what the course covers. And because you're here, please know that next, this coming year, we're calling it the year of middle school writing. All middle school writing courses are 30% off. That's huge. That's a third off. And you have to use the code MS, AWA, <coughs> excuse me, MS for middle school, AWA 30. And when you use that during registration, it'll give you 30% off just for middle school live courses, okay? Now, because you're here, you also can use HSC 10 to get an extra $10 off the current early enrollment price. Early enrollment goes through July 15th for the summer. And so courses are all $20 off up to early enrollment. And then you can get another $10 off with this HSC 10. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, there is a free webinar with Good Counsel Careers, which is a subsidiary or a group from Homeschool Connections. I wanted to mention that here, Monday, June 26th at 7 p.m. Um, this is for high school families, all right? Um, also because you're here, you're going to get sent to you this 
live course guide for summer and fall. And it'll look like this. And it shows the course and some brief information. Again, to find out more, you can go to the website, AquinasWritingAdvantage.com. Those courses, course, I can't talk. Those codes are for all live courses. Yes, absolutely right. Okay. So the code again is MS. Let me go back so you can write it here. MSAWA30. That's for middle school courses live. There we go. Thank you, Jennifer. And then because you're here, any course and every course is another $10 off with HSC 10, right? And then if you register before July 15th, you get $20 off every course. And Aubrey put the registration page there. So are the live courses priced differently than the rest of the Aquinas Writing courses? Or are live courses included in the 35 a month? Great question. We're thinking now of recorded courses and live courses. Recorded courses are the $34.97 a month. So you get access to all the recorded course materials, everything for $34.97 a month. The live courses are a separate price. It's different. Think of it as two silos, two, two different camps, two different groups. Okay, that makes sense. So the live course will be a certain price per course that you'll find in the uh, catalog or in the registration page that was just given there, it'll tell all about the course and the price. And the prices are based on the weeks and the amount of work that this, the teacher is uh, grading and the difficulty of the course, okay? All right, thank you. If you have questions, homeschoolconnections at gmail.com is the general office with some wonderful, wonderful people to answer your questions. I'm giving you also my email, E.B. Conroy, that's one of my author names, at homeschoolconnections.com for questions. And also Aubrey, if you could put your email in, Aubrey is the managing director and is a fabulous, fabulous resource for questions. It's a hecky, H-E-K-I, at homeschoolconnections.com. There we go. Thank you, Aubrey. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this share and I'm going to, you can come on if you'd like, Aubrey, you wanna come on for recording. We can change so that I'm not highlighted anymore. Aubrey's here, Jennifer, feel free to come on. And anybody else that wants to come on video, you're welcome to. I'm gonna answer any questions. I see a great question from Lana came in. Good evening to everyone. Thank you for this information. I was wondering what writing course would you recommend for a child who enjoys writing sermons, is interested in eventually going to seminary and is gifted in the area of speaking. I'm assuming that any writing course would be beneficial, but I was wondering if there's spe something special. Let me help him. Yes. What are you high school or grade level, high school or middle school? That is an important Yes, thing. he's he's going into eighth grade. Eighth grade. All right. Yes. Um, Oh gosh, any of the courses that talk about form. So when he gets into the you know seven, eight course would be a great one, but we actually have anything. Uh, there's the leadership course would be really great for him. There's, okay. Um, the the um, how to be an excellent student course would be great for him. It's a four week course. Um, and then we do have speech courses that are not in the writing program, but I believe writing and speaking go together. The thought yes. process. And so um, any the, the whole series of writing courses would be wonderful, wonderful for him. It would give him a super solid foundation and the creative writing would too. Okay. Well, he enjoys okay. your he enjoyed your classes. He took one and two of the six and seven. Oh. And so he enjoyed it very Excellent. much. And so wonderful. that's why we would continue. I appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Other questions, feel free to just come on the microphone or to write the question in the chat box. Did I miss any, Jennifer or Aubrey? Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, there was a ahead. direct message. Um, it says, um, what are the first steps we need to do to enroll my daughter? I'm a little bit confused. My daughter just promoted to seventh grade. She's a Colby Academy student. All right, and there are quite a few Colby Academy students here. So, you know, we work very well with Colby. So it depends on, on whether you wanna have a live class or a recorded course right? That's the first decision is, do I want my student to have a recorded course that they do on their own pace or with me? Do I want the recorded course 
with an instructor access teacher or do I want to take a live course that starts in the fall? So that's the first choice. Then it's where and where do I fit? And you can either do an assessment or you can reach out to me and we can talk about your specific situation or Ms. Hecke, Aubrey, she can also talk with you about specific situations. Does that make sense? All right. Now, Teresa says, I'm looking at the live class catalog on the website. It says it's the 20, 21, 22 catalog. Yeah, but that is not the current one. We have a current one. Aubrey, is there a link? Do we have our current ones posted that are that we are going to be handing out? I think the AWA writing course guide is on the website. I will look and find that exact link. Yeah. It's a different one than that. This year, the general Aquinas Writing Advantage or the general Homeschool Connections did not create a new catalog, um, but we did as a writing program. We created a catalog for live courses. So the times, uh, let's see, Jennifer, could you put in the Go Sign Me Up link? the registration system the, that shows classes and times. And many of these classes have multiple times, live classes. So the six, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, all have multiple, many times during the week, different times of day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, mostly. Um, so we have, I think, six sessions of the nine series and so on. Yeah, you know, there's the registration page and you can go there and you can search down at the bottom on the left hand side, you can put in middle school writing or high school writing or any of the numbers of courses that we talked about. But again, after being here, we're going to send you the catalog as well. You should be getting that in the next 48 hours. I was going to say, I can't find it on the website. It used to be on the banner, but the banner is different. Um, there's a countdown banner. But um, like Erin mentioned, the live course guide for AWA is going to be sent out in the next day or so when this recording goes out. If you want it sooner and you want to send me an email directly, I'm happy to just email you that PDF. There you go. Yep, there you go. A Hecky at homeschoolconnections.com and she'll mail it out to you directly. What happens if you miss a class? That's a great question. A live class, Christina. The, all classes are recorded and within 24 hours, the recording is posted. And we have quite a few students who are involved in other sports or debates or a vacation or travel or something happens, a dentist appointment, you know. And so um, you just let the teacher know that you're going to miss the course and then watch the recording within, we ask within 24 to 48 hours, you watch the recording. So you have time to do the homework and ask questions and to email any questions to the teacher. Okay, so that's what we do. Yeah, everything is recorded and you can back and watch it as many times as you want to. Yeah, great question. Any other questions? And I don't know if I mentioned this, we do have students from all over the world. We have students, not just North America and Canada, um, South Africa, Central Africa, Dubai, um, Australia, New Zealand, the Philippines, Taiwan, um, Europe, all over Europe. Um, one of our teachers is in Japan, another teacher is in South America. <laughs> it's just a really neat uh, worldwide kind of a program. All right, Erin, there my... is one more question. Yeah, I see, is that from Ruth? My son is currently enrolled in Writing Essentials second, and one day it said there was a newest pre-recorded course. Do you recommend you join the, re the newer course? Yes, I just, I'm re-recording. Uh, this last semester, I've re recorded all the six sevens. Every year, I re record one course because we're old enough now that every four to five years, I re record and update. So, yeah, I'd go ahead and up, go, go into the new one. Just start in the week that you were in, and you'll get um, new updates and you'll see my days <laughs> and new information. All right. A question from Casey, for my rising 10th grader, could you provide the steps or classes we need to take to get them enrolled in the live classes for the fall? That would be very easy because uh, for 10th grade, you'd probably wanna watch the recording of the nine series this summer. Just watch it, take the, the um, like the six, uh, the nine one course is six classes of punctuation and grammar, you could do two a week. 
or you could have them watch the class and take the quiz and see how he does. If he doesn't do well, you can go back and look at the rest of the materials. If he does well, just move on. Okay, that's a prerequisite. And then you can, you don't have to have someone working with your student, but I do highly recommend if you don't have instructor access and do the recorded courses as a prerequisite that you sit with the student or at least have them sit at the kitchen table and they are around them. And that way, you know, the student is actually doing the work and paying attention because what is in the nine series is used in the 10. And this is for your students' sake. It's not, you know, just to check it off. It's so that when we talk about, oh my gosh, that's a one plus one equals one sentence. The student's not like, what does that mean? They go, oh, it's a compound sentence. One full sentence plus one full sentence. And the little and is an and, but, or, for, nor yet. So, right, the little fanboy's word. And if you have a one plus one, you use a comma, right? It's, it's, a, it's a really cool shorthand that we use. Or, oh, that's a by the way. We need a comma after any by the way. And so there's, there's a certain language that we use that has been proven for about 25 years that I've used this language. And it's um, one of the books we use is a book I wrote that has been used in colleges and schools across the world. And it's been proven to be super helpful for kids. So we, that's for your student, for his or her sake, so that they know that shorthand and can respond quickly with the actual writing part. Does that make sense? Okay, let's see. Is there a specific class you're going for the seventh grader who does not enjoy writing besides the six, seven series? Um, I would definitely, do of the six, seven, like on your own or with someone helping out or just kind of take your time with it. And because there's so many great things with the six, seven courses that make writing easy. I think part of it might be that it's just not easy, right? And make it super easy. And uh, the exercises, the, the little fun things that we write, they're fun. The six, seven, one, and three are graded tests that are online. So again, you watch the recording, take the test. If they're great, move on. If they're not, if they struggle, go back and take, take the actual you know, readings and other material. But you can zip through those. And then the six, seven, three, and four are actual writing things where we take a sentence and we, we make the sentence really cool and fun. All right, question. Which nine courses are prereqs for the tens? Nine, one, and two, three. I recommend one, two, three, four. I really do. You can message me, um, but if you're already writing, if your student's already writing in a 10th grade level, we have things in the ninth grade level that are typically 10th grade. Again, starting in seventh, six, seven, I'm sorry, starting in seven, eight, I started putting more on, more in the courses. So the, six, the seven, eight, six, seven, it's six, seven, seven, eight, starting to get some nine in there of a typical ninth grade classroom. The ninth grade has 10th, about half of it is 10th grade. The nine, two, uh, three and four is a lot of 10th grade writing stuff. Does that make sense? And then the 10th grade is the critical thinking and the vocabulary and the things that schools don't cover that are so important. Okay, does that make sense? So it, it really is worth taking, okay? Um, they've done IEW, oh, nine courses, oh, IEW structure and style, it seems a bit repetitive. This is not like IEW at all. I can guarantee that. This is not anything like IEW. Okay, and I know IEW very well. Years ago, um, I used to speak at the same conferences as the creator of IEW. He and I, you know, 20 years ago, would be at, like in Chicago together and going out to dinner together. And, you know, and he'd be sitting in the front row of my session and I'd be sitting in the front row of his. I know. This is nothing like his program, okay? So yeah, feel free to email, Aubrey says, absolutely, yeah. Great questions, guys. I know we went over, usually we're done by 9.20, but I'm happy to answer if there are any other questions, we'll wrap it up in the next minute or so. But if there are any other questions, I'm really happy to answer them. Again, you can email us at any time as well. If later on you think, oh, I didn't ask that question, that's okay. Just send a question off. We're here, we're here to help. And the websites have great information as well. Okay. All right, well, let's call it a night. Thank you all for being here. I really appreciate your time.
Our time is precious. And I appreciate that you felt that you wanted to give that time here. I, I appreciate that. The Johnson family asks about lost tools of writing. This is not like lost tools of writing at all either. This is, again, this is designed from my experience as a curriculum designer, as a college writing professor, as a trainer of teachers for many, many years. It is the things that I saw lacking and that I wanted my teams to know, right? When they were in school and it's filling in the holes and the gaps that the programs out there have today. So I can guarantee you what here is here is not what's out there today in a good way. And I've, uh, this is, uh, I call it my baby. <laughs> this, is, this is my, my uh, 13th child <laughs> because it's um, all the things that I think that writing programs are missing and need are here. Yes. Oh, thank you, Greg. Can you tell I love what I do? Can you tell I love writing? This is my passion. And again, all the teachers here are, we are not just teachers. We're, they're, we're passionate writers. And it's about uh, people who love writing and love teaching. There, you will not find a teacher here who just went to school and became a teacher and then came into our program. As it, that doesn't happen. You have to have a lot to be in this program helping other writers. So, all right, feel free to reach out at any time. Thank you, Aubrey, for being here. Aubrey's amazing. Feel free to message her. She has great, great communication. Um, thank you, Jennifer, for being here and helping. And Casey, the last question, what happens if my student comes out of this course not being a good writer? Um, I have, I don't, I'm just, I don't hear about that. I hear great things. And if we if the student is struggling, we have the writing support specialists to help exactly what's needed. So if they come out of a course and there's something they didn't understand, they usually go to the writing support specialist who helps them understand. That's what we do here. We don't like to leave, we don't leave students not knowing or not understanding or not being a great writer. We do all that we can to make it happen, okay? It's that important. Writing is one of those critical, critical skills. It's a, it's a critical skill that moves into all that you do. Everything that you do in the future, writing and communicating is a huge part of that as an adult and as in success in school. We know this, or in a job. So, all right, you're very welcome, Ruth. Thank you for being here. God bless you all, and I hope to see you in our program here. All right, God bless.